Hi everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and today with our sponsor Monica, I am going to try dyeing some thread for the first time. We have here some 100% cotton crochet thread and I want to play around with this in a few different techniques with some red liquid dyes. I don't think I've ever dyed anything as tightly wound as thread before unless you consider that I've dyed t-shirts and handkerchiefs and things like that. I have a lot of ideas of how to incorporate threads into my spinning, so I'm really excited to uh, have this opportunity to dye some 100% cotton thread and see what kind of patterns we can get on it. Each one of these balls has about 400 yards of thread, and I'm gonna go start off by winding these into some skeins on my automated skein winder uh, so that way it is in a form that will be a little easier for us to work with. I wound these three balls into some circular skeins with my skein winder so it should now be a lot easier for us to apply the dye. I did add on some new little uh, zip ties just so hopefully things will not end up tangled. Um, but we're going to try three different techniques and see how successful we might be. I pre-soaked our cotton thread in some plain tap water overnight. Um, this, the thread actually went in really easily, but I wanted to make sure that the fibers were nice and saturated so that way they might soak up some of the dye and we might have a shot of altering the color of this thread. The Written instructions say to add one cup of salt to the dye bath for cotton and a few other fibers. And so that is what we are going to do. I'm adding some to the pre-soak, which I will mix in. Yeah, yeah, maybe half a cup plus a little extra is sufficient. Um, I'm adding a bunch to the pre-soak because I do want to try a few different hand painting techniques in a little while. Um, but, and so for that, I'm not going to be mixing salt in with the, the dyes. I would like to have some sort of in our yarn already. I'm not sure how table salt, um, sort of helps. Maybe it slows things down. I, I don't really know. Um, feel free to let me know in the comments, but certainly this table salt is not going to alter the pH at all but I'm going to let it sit in that salty solution for 20 minutes or so. Before I try some other techniques on this cotton thread, I thought it would be worth to attempt some dip dyeing so I could get a feel for how the thread may or may not absorb these dyes. Um, and yeah, I thought it was just a nice starting point. In my dedicated dye capot, I have 16 cups of water and I am just adding one cup of table salt um, that does not have any iodine in it. For the color today, we're going to use a tablespoon of the color teal. And it is not hot yet, so I can put the plastic spoon into the pot. And then we're going to add just a tiny bit, like a little bit. I didn't measure the volume, but it's just a hint of the gray. This is, oh funny, look at the salt on top. Um, this is a lot of color, and I didn't check the weight of this dye, but uh, we're going to dip and sort of either decide if I want to try to kettle dye it in the end, um, if it looks like we're not soaking up a lot of color, or just sort of see you know, how it goes and how we're absorbing the color. I'm really glad to have those nylon zip ties because I think that'll keep, help me keep a handle on the yarn when it's in the pot, but once we're hot, we'll come back. We are nice and hot, and let's start dip dyeing. Um, one of those ties is gonna go in, and the one thing I'm concerned about is that there isn't gonna be a ton of movement um, in between the skein. You know, so I'm a little worried about that, but I'm just sort of swirling it in as I'm dipping. Um, so that way, ooh, hopefully, like, 
Yeah, okay, it looks like all the threads are able to pick up color. And we're just gonna be slowly dipping this. This is sort of my initial test slash little backup to see how this might all go. But, you know, certainly there's no question we're getting a gradient, but I know if I was gonna add this whole thing into the pot that we would likely, ugh, we might want, end up wanting to steam this um, because I have a feeling that there's just a bit too much color in here for what we might want overall. But so far, so far so good. And I really like having this zip tie. I'm curious and I'm gonna just dunk that one end really fast. I mean, this is a really, really lovely, lovely gradient so far. Um, but I have a feeling, yeah, there's no way we're gonna get this to exhaust, but I do think we are creating something that is fairly unique um, for like this type of yarn. I wanna keep, is this last edge? Yeah, even there, like the penetration color penetration is really, really good. Um, yeah, I'm really, really liking how this is coming out and definitely something is sticking to it, but I highly, highly doubt, um, yeah, the color, there's still so, so much color in here. I mean, I forget, I should have checked to see what proportions I had used before for even like 100 grams of yarn. Um, and let's quickly get that tip in. Oh, and I think that we like rotated it a bit. But, okay, I'm not gonna dip our end tip in again. But I will keep doing the rest because I want it to get some good heat. We can always steam it more later. I'm unsure like how much this end that's at the bottom could absorb, but I am very happy with how this is ending up, which is good because I wanted to have sort of like, I wanted to try a few things, but I wanted to have a backup um, to give Monica <laughs> Everything else I try fails miserably. But yeah, I am digging it. Is it? Yeah, that color is going all the way through. I am rather impressed. Now is there, yeah, there's, I think we're still soaking up some color. So I'm gonna keep at this. Goodness, so it's been about less than like four minutes. I'm gonna keep at this for a little while. Uh, I'm gonna keep at this for another minute or two and then I will remove this from the pot, set it aside, and let it cool completely. All right, dipped friend one is cooling and I now have a second skein which I'm gonna do really really quickly I think just sort of dip and wiggle around and dip up to get a bit of a base type color on it. Um, I plan to hand paint this one further, but um, I wanted to sort of start off with some amount of color. There's a lot of color left in this pot. Now I'm gonna add, I should have put a zip tie on it, just this dry hank of Knit Picks Hawthorne. And just so we can see just how much color there is, there's a lot of color. Oh goodness, and I am going to leave this in here for about 10 minutes and we'll see how much this absorbed. Oh, I need vinegar. It's wool, I need vinegar. <laughs> Let's add, silly me. It's not a nice little splash of vinegar there. 
for for this Hawthorn. I would have been so perplexed. <laughs> okay, we are at a very, very nice little simmer there. And a lot of the color has absorbed. There's just a tiny bit of, bit of color that is left in that dye pot. And we've got a beautiful, beautiful, deep teal that is likely a semi-solid. So at this stage, um, I am going to turn off the heat completely and let this Hawthorne base, which is 80% Superwash Fine Highland Wool, 20% Polyamid, cool off in the pot. What we did learn is that a little over one tablespoon of the RIT liquid dye goes a long way. And this is a lesson I had learned before, but it's a lot of color. So if or when we start trying to hand paint um, this yarn, that's just something to keep in mind. After cooling in the pot for a while, the water is looking very, very, very clear. I'm gonna now set this yarn aside so it can cool completely before we wash it. Here is our dip dyed yarn. And in my opinion, I'm still not sure if the RIT Color Stay Dyed Fixative is worth it, but I did add some to the spray bottle. And I am going to spray it over this yarn. We will flip it over and spray the other side as well. Um, I'm not entirely sure what's in there. This uh, spray bottle that I got from like Home Depot or someplace actually worked really, really nicely for this. Um, but I'm now um, going to let this yarn sit in the dye fixative for about 20 minutes, and then we will start washing this one. It's been 20 minutes, so now we are going to wash our dip dye cotton yarn. And I will say, we use the color fixative and this had not been rinsed or even wrung out beforehand. All right, I am seeing a little bit of bleeding. But overall, I am fairly impressed. Well, we, we will be adding you know, some fish soap. I might do this twice. I'm not gonna be removing the nylon ties until this is dry. Um, mainly because I do not want um, to tangle it and those nylon ties, you can see I have them through my thumb, are part of, part of what's really helping keep things together. But yeah, I would say the bleeding is minimal given that the sheer like amount of color that was in there. I guess dip dyeing helps because the only color that's sort of left in there um, might not be like most of the color that's in there is stuff that has absorbed. But even after just a few rinses, like this is really minimal, minimal bleeding. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna rinse it a few more times and then hang this up to dry. I have poured a tiny amount of the charcoal gray, a tiny amount of navy. Actually, those could be reversed. And I am gonna use a little itty bitty paintbrush to paint on some speckles. I laid both this pale sort of aqua skein and the white skein on the counter um, because I am going to go over with both of them and just do some itty bitty little itty bitty little specks in some areas. I don't know if I'm going to do the whole skein and I'm getting these sharpest little specks when I just barely, barely tap, um, tap the base. And honestly, I can't tell if, which color this is right now. Um, the yarn, eh, I might do the whole thing. The yarn is definitely room temperature right now. It is no longer, um, this one is no longer hot at all. I did that section and I'm gonna flip it. Sort of do the other side but this actually like wouldn't take very long. I'm not sure how much of a difference the 
sort of navy or charcoal gray will make on like this light blue base if it'll really be an obvious difference but uh, yeah I think that you might notice that if I press it in you get a deeper color and let me try this on this other side so here's gonna be one where I'm just gonna lightly tap Here's gonna be one where I press for longer and let's see actually so the press for longer got some good it, it, it all works um, it all works and I think we're gonna end up with a really really cool sort of speckled pattern on here and so I yeah I think I'm working with the navy right now let me hmm I'm like do I want to well maybe instead of rinsing off my brush I will just tap it until uh, I have all of most of this color off mm -hmm. and let's try some of the charcoal just to see how much of a okay there is a bit of a difference here um, the initial dips of the charcoal spread out a bit more um, than than those navy ones did but um, I think that it also looks pretty like the difference what's funny is that it's not that it feels brown because it's definitely a gray um, but the other one is just so blue one thing with this technique that you want to pay attention to is you don't want to have um, the paintbrush going like in the same direction as the strands. To get the smallest sort of hand painted specks, you really do want um, to have them whoop, go across because even with a bigger sort of splotch of color, that's going to be a speck um, and I think it'll be rather cool. Let me flip this grayish section. I think that the I'm actually fairly pleased with how the colors are going but and you know you could paint like all the way across in a line in one section or just do this sort of randomly I think that going randomly around will result in a more sort of random non repeating speckled kind of thing but yeah I think this one will have especially if you're um, if Monica's knitting like a bookmark or something, there might be sections of more brown speckles and then sections of more navy. Because uh, depending on how narrow it is, uh, I'm not sure how far it'll go. But yeah, I'm really, really excited with this so far. We've added speckles to most of this already. I'm going to carry on and add, um, I think, a few more gray and then a bunch more navy uh, speckles to this blue one and then do something similar on the white skein and then we will come back all right this is all finished up I went a little heavier and bigger on the white skein initially I thought I just might full-on hand paint it but I was really really pleased with how the speckles went so I wanted to try it on the blue base but then also the white base because we'll see when we rinse and everything how much those colors will bleed I did go ahead and mix a little bit of purple in with some of the navy to add a third color onto that white one. But now I need to go set up the steam basket and then we can um, go and steam this to set the color. Don't worry, I will do something else with that leftover dye that we've got over there. Um, but now let's wrap up our speckled cotton friends. Um, I did sort of a double protection today. I have a shower curtain on my work surface, and then I did do this on top of some plastic wrap, mainly because I thought that I might do some different techniques, and I wasn't entirely sure what I would do or how this would turn out, but I am really, really excited. Even if the colors do spread out a lot, I think that we've got some really awesome lace weight cotton thread. I'm not sure if the steamer basket is spoiling yet, but I do want to start heating things up. I'm going to plop in that little jelly roll, add a lid on here, and okay, we are hot, even if it's not yet boiling. I'm going to go ahead and steam this for 40 minutes, and then we'll come back. The 40 minutes are up, and 
Um, as you can see, things are nice and steamy. Uh, I could go unwrap it and spray the color fixative on now while it's hot, but I actually think that I'm going to wait to let it cool off so that way I can comfortably touch it and lay it out in a pan before spraying some of that fixative on it. Ooh, it's pretty. Okay, let's unwrap this. It's actually still warm, but a manageable amount of warm. Ooh, actually, that's quite warm in the middle. Okay, let's take, um, I would say, this one isn't looking very white to me anymore. It does look like there's a tad bit of yellow in that one. Um, like maybe one of the colors, maybe the gray or something broke. Um, but I'm also not really seeing any color on the plastic wrap. But I'm now going to spray all of this with the, the Rit Color Fixative. And I'm going to flip it over. Try to get some coverage on the other side. You guys know that I'm not sure how much of a difference it makes, but since I have it, it's worth using it. <laughs> so I will now let this sit for 20 minutes. It has been 20 minutes, and so let's start rinsing off our yarn. But right now, I am not seeing any bleeding. Wow, I wonder if that'll continue. But I have to say, I am impressed that I'm not observing bleeding yet. Uh, let's make sure I keep two of the ties. Yeah, I am really, really impressed. Um, I think that a long time in the steam pot and using ultimately very little dye. Like there was only a tiny amount of dye um, present in here. But I will go ahead and use some clear fish soap. We'll see if any color, looking great to me, um, will come off. But we're going to keep rinsing this. Okay, maybe now with some warm water and a little bit of soap, I'm seeing a tiny bit of color come out. But overall, I am not concerned about this at all. And here's our bonus semi-solid, nearly solid, deep, deep teal that is just beautiful. I see a little blading, but I'm going to go ahead and wash this as I did with the other stains and hang up to dry. And we'll come back, um, you know, you soap and everything and we'll talk about it with the rest of the yarn. I haven't even taken off the zip ties, but I am so, so thrilled with how these came out. Uh, Monica, it's gonna be really, really hard for me to choose which one to send you. We tied this lace weight cotton crochet thread in three different colorways using the RIT liquid dyes. I like RIT because it's good on a lot of natural fibers. Um, I've used it very successfully on both cotton and wool. Um, I've never dyed this cotton thread before and I was so impressed by both how easily it absorbed water and how well it took up the color. I mean, these colors didn't spread out very far at all. And we were able to create a speckled colorway on cotton by just drawing on these speckles with a paintbrush. I think that this means that you could potentially use RIT to speckle other types of cotton yarn. Um, and if the yarn is absorbent enough, maybe you could even start with it dry. I think with this particular thread, you might be able to start with it dry because when I went and put it in the pre-soak, it just immediately sunk in. There wasn't really a struggle to get it submerged. But with some cotton yarns, um, it takes a lot for it to soak. They're not very absorbent. Um, and so that's just something to, else to keep in mind as you're planning out a technique. But I think that if we had started with, say, dry thread, maybe we would have been able to get some of these speckles even more concentrated. 
but likely, even though this was very wet and saturated, the thread probably isn't that absorbent overall. And so I think that that likely helped with the sharpness of some of these speckles. We dip dyed the very top skein um, in a dye bath with the Rit dyes. I was curious about how much color it could absorb and how quickly we would see it. I wanted to make sure that it would work well before going on and trying to hand paint and have everything get messed up. I then decided to do sort of a base color and, and again in case the speckles didn't work great and we got more splotches variegated. So I just quickly dipped the second skein into that dye bath and that gave us in the middle the sort of pastel aqua tone. And then finally, I started with a pure white and the pale aqua skeins, and then I just painted on straight from the liquid dye containers, undiluted, I just painted on speckles. I tried, like, one tablespoon of the Rit liquid dyes is way too much, even for all three of these skeins. I used a full skein of Knit Picks Hawthorne fingering weight yarn, which is 80% superwash fine highland wool, 20% poly amid, in that leftover dye bath. And actually, the whole hue is a bit, um, a little less bright, a little more teal than, like there's a little less yellow in it. So who knows, maybe something yellow absorbed faster to the cotton? I don't know. But there was clearly just a lot of dye. And so about one tablespoon of dye is enough for 100 grams, but maybe a bit too much for um, this thread. But this Leave No Dye Behind skein is beautiful, semi-solid. It's just also a really, really fun yarn. While I don't have specific plans to dye more cotton thread in the future, I am so thrilled with these results that I am excited to play around with some other newish techniques on cotton yarn. Monica, thank you so much for sponsoring this episode of Dye Pot Weekly. I hope that you will love your thread as much as I do. If you'd like to learn more about sponsoring an episode of Dye Pot Weekly, you can find a link to the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop in the video description and iCard. Sponsors um, get a choice of the yarn base, tell me some colors to avoid as I'm filming the episode, and then in the end end up with a skein of yarn that has been dyed in one of my videos. Please reach out to me in a private message on Etsy if you are interested in a yarn base that isn't one of the ones that I have as an option. Um, it might cost a little more, but I am happy to discuss other, uh, other types of yarn bases for these sponsored videos. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and make sure that you are subscribed to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel and turn on notifications so you never miss a new video. I publish new videos on Tuesday and Friday mornings, um, and there's frequently a lot of extra fun episodes along the way, and you don't want to miss a thing. Thank you so, so much for watching, everyone.